Hey everyone, Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on our 1999 Porsche 911. This DIY is gonna show you how to A, clean out your radiators, if that's all you're gonna be looking at doing today. B, upgrading your radiators, whether you have broken them or you wanna upgrade them. Couple reasons why you might wanna look into this. On these cars, as you may or may not know, the radiators are located on the front of the bumper. You have two big air ducts that feed in air to the radiators and AC condensers. Over time, from normal driving, you get a lot of crud build up, just debris off the road, you name it, it's gonna get stuck in there and lower the efficiency of how your system operates. So you can use this video to figure out how to remove the bumper and clean your radiators out. Other times what happens is the stock units on these cars have plastic end tanks. Over time in heat cycles, the plastic degrades. Sometimes you hit a big bump or maybe you hit something on the road and they tend to crack or fail. So that's another reason why you may wanna be looking into this. For us, we're just gonna go ahead and upgrade our vehicle with these nice CSF units. The cool thing about these is that they offer 40% more coolant capacity. They're a double row system and they're 15 to 25% more efficient than the stock units in the car. So not only are they more efficient and have a better capacity of cooling, but the end tanks are not gonna be a problem for the future. So pretty cool upgrade from CSF. You can see both sides, full metal on metal, even where your cooling hoses connect. So it's just a really nice peace of mind and nice knowing that you don't have to worry about plastic end tanks cracking. So with that being said, before we get started, let's take a look at the tools we're gonna need for this job. For this job, we have a couple basic tools to do the uh, bumper removal and the radiator replacement. Uh, first hand, a different array of screwdrivers is helpful. I have a couple Phillips and flatheads on the table. Different size ratchets, I have a 3 8 drive and a quarter inch drive, as well as a couple different sockets and extensions and attachments, ranging anywhere from a T25 to a 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, and I use a 16 and a 19 to change those ports on one of the radiators, as you'll see. We have a pick tool, just a nice to have. It's this rivet removal tool. As you can see, it's gonna be helpful with our fender liner rivets. Hose clamp pliers. These are excellent for removing old hose clamps and installing new ones. And then a couple nice to haves. We have this Airlift 2 vacuum filler. This is gonna be uh, the tool we're gonna to use to fill the, the cooling system on the vehicle. And the last nice to have is just an electric ratchet. These make removal of loose screws and bolts easy and quick. Now we have the tools covered, let's head over to the car and start on this DIY. To get started, we're gonna work on getting our front bumper cover off. We're gonna work on removing this, you can call it a bumper surround or a radiator surround. It's basically a little grill. It's held in by four plastic rivets. They just twist out, so we'll get started with that. Also gonna lift up the weather stripping here just so it's out of our way. Go ahead and save these rivets. And if yours is all destroyed like ours is, this is supposed to have a weather stripping seal here. Now would be a good time to replace it. You can see what's left of our seal. While we're here, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two Phillip head screws. Um, we may come back and take out the headlight if it gives us better access for filming for you guys. But for now, we'll just take these two off and get the car up in the air so we can continue. That. Right. Now we got the car in the air, we're going to start by removing our wheel. A couple 19 millimeter lug bolts and our Porsche wheel lock. Now we have our wheel off, we can go ahead and remove our wheel liner. So we're going to start on the front. We have a couple rivets to remove and a 10 millimeter plastic nut. I'm going to start with the 10 millimeter plastic nut. I'm just using some pliers to remove. These are just push rivets. You can use a rivet remover or a plastic trim tool, anything of that sort to get these out. This is just what we have on hand here. If you have pliers like this, these will also help. We just found these on the floor. Just 
one. Now we got our wheel liner insides removed. We have a couple underneath the front bumper. I'm gonna start with these three Phillip head screws. Over here, we'll also go ahead and take out this other Phillips head screw that holds in the actual bumper cover itself. Now we have one more up front here. Hole. And we have another rivet right up in this recessed hole. Bam, baby. Now with all the hardware removed, we can go ahead and remove this wheel liner. Sign from the front. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this turn signal marker. Simply put your finger behind it and pull out. It's just in there by tension. You can pull it out and disconnect your electrical connector. Similar to the ones in the engine bay, you just push down on the metal piece and pull off. Now with the side marker removed, we have three more screws to get to. We have one that's right here, one that's right here, and one from behind the bumper cover that comes out right there. So that's gonna pretty much wrap up the hardware on the passenger side of the car. So you can see we just tucked the wheel liner back for now. We may or may not come back to fully remove it. We're gonna see how far we get like this. But the idea is gonna be similar on the driver's side. So we're gonna hop on over there. Same thing, take off our wheel, our liner, our hardware. And then before we're ready to pull off the bumper cover, we'll show you the last bits of hardware underneath so we can get to these radiators. Now we have both sides at the same spot. We have a couple more things to get to. We have three pieces of hardware underneath the bumper. And then we are one step closer. These are just Phillip head screws. Before we pull the bumper cover off, we do have a temperature sensor to address. That's on the passenger side. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it so that way we don't damage it when we pull the cover off. To get this out, you can just pull it from the bumper cover and just set it to the side. It'll sit in the air dam. Now, we're ready to go ahead and pull this off. Now we're ready to remove our bumper cover and this will tell us if we missed any hardware or not. And just like that, it's off. At this point, we're ready to start getting our radiator out of the car. Before we remove this plastic shroud, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the sensor. So I'm gonna get that removed, and then we got a couple Torx bolts to get out of here. Get out of here, I'm walking here. Press on the tab, release baby. Now we're ready to remove this front cover. You have a couple T25s all around the edges. Let's get started. And that's after vacuuming. Now we have our ducting removed. We can go ahead and get these two T25s that hold in our AC condenser out so we can slide it out of place and work on removing our radiators. Once you remove the two T25s, you have a little notch on the left-hand side that the condenser keys into. So you're gonna slide it towards the nose of the car and then it'll pop out. Messy. Now we have our AC condenser off to the side. We can work on getting this radiator and fan assembly out. Uh, to get started, you're gonna wanna work on disconnecting the electrical connector for the fan. To get it off, you're gonna slide it forward. And from there, you can pull it out towards you. You got a tab on the top and the bottom of the plug. You can pull the disconnect. Just leave that there for now. Next, we're gonna work on getting the hardware off so we can get this whole assembly out of the vehicle. 
while also giving ourselves some access to the upper and lower radiator hose. We have two 13 millimeter bolts underneath for this radiator fan assembly. That feels promising. From here, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two retaining clips on the end that hold the fan assembly to the radiator itself. We'll be reusing these when we install our new unit. Just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pry these out. Once you get them started, you can tap them out. Keep the washer with them, set them to the side. Push out on the fan shroud, if you will, the back bracket, so that we can push the nipples coming out of the radiator out of this assembly right here. So I'm starting at the bottom, just gonna use my fingers to kind of push like that. Do the same thing on the top. Just like so. pretty much free. Now we have this semi disassembled. We're gonna go ahead and remove this upper radiator hose. It's just a tiny hose held on by a constant pressure clamp. Use our hose clamp pliers and get that off. Slide it back. Money shot. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this radiator hose from the fan shroud assembly. Just held in by two clips. He's gonna pop them out of place. Push one there. And the second one there. And this hose can stay in the car. Just gonna tuck it up out of the way. We have one more T25 on this uh, fan shroud assembly, if you wanna call it, or bracket to take off before we can pull this out. There we go. Now with this separated, we can pull back on this and work on keeping the harness with the fan and radiator and removing this bracket. From here we can pull this wiring out from behind the fan shroud. And then you have a resistor at the bottom here that can just unclip from the bracket and then the bracket can be removed. Nice. Now we can go ahead and remove our lower and radiator upper coolant hoses. So we can use our coolant hose pliers and get those freed up and then we can work on pulling out the radiator as a whole. Now is a good time to have a catch bucket or catch can or whatever you want underneath the uh, radiator, if you haven't done so already, to catch all the excess coolant. Beautiful. Now we have the hose clamps undone, we can go ahead and work on separating our radiator hoses and making a coolant mess. Like I understand why these are plastic, but I'm also kind of impressed that they're just plastic. This hose is actually splitting as I'm touching it. Now we can go ahead and pull the radiator and fan assembly out together. The other end of the radiator is simply in a uh, plastic grommet that keeps it aligned, which is what's been holding up this whole time. I'm just gonna go ahead and lift it, pull it out, try to contain this coolant from going everywhere at the same time. Boom, baby.
Now we're ready to go ahead and get our new CSF radiator ready for install. We have to do a couple things before we do that though. For starters, for the passenger side of the vehicle, our nipple for our radiator hose, the small tiny one that we disconnected first, is on the wrong side. This is how they ship them, so we have to go ahead and swap this port with the one up here. You'll see it just has a plug. So we're going to get those swapped over. This is going to be a 19 millimeter socket, and then this is going to be a 16 millimeter socket. Let's get that going. So this is what these look like. So same thread, just different locations. We're going to go ahead and swap them out so we can make this work on our passenger side. Use the ratchet to snug it down. These don't take a lot of, a lot of torque. Just tighten them down. It's just a rubber seal. It's gonna be it, bro. All right. Now that we have that taken care of, there's a couple things to note. It's just a rubber, it's not even a crush washer, it's a rubber seal that goes on each end of these plugs. It doesn't take a lot of force at all. You can probably do it almost by hand. Now we're ready to go ahead and transfer our fan onto our new radiator. To do that, we have to remove these two brass clips at the end, then we can pull it out. It just notches into the back here and get it over to our new housing. You can see the new CSF units come with the notches for the fan shroud. So let's go ahead and get that done. Beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and now that these clips are off to side, we want to pry these little brackets over and then we can unhook this whole assembly off this old unit. Just like that. Beautiful. Should I be concerned that these have cobwebs on them? Does that mean they haven't been working in a long time? find out on the next episode of Pimp My Ride with FCP Euro. Our fan is going to notch into the CSF tabs by the hose connections. I'm going to push it in slowly while also guiding in our brackets around these metal nipples. Beautiful. Then we can go ahead and slip our brass clips back on. There's one. That looks like two to me. Now we can go ahead and install our new radiator hoses. I'm going to try my best to mimic the curvature and uh, way these are hooked up from the old unit onto our new one. So you get two of each. You get one that's pretty straight for the most part and one that's soft noodle looking like. The soft noodle looking like one is going to be at the bottom for the passenger side. The semi straight one is going to be on the top for the passenger side. Now, on these hoses, you're going to see that there is a notch cut out on them. The notch is basically going to center you on the connection for the hose itself. If you look at your old plastic tank side, you're going to see that they have little notches for those. However, these are metal, so they're not there, but use these as a guide to center your hoses. So as mentioned before, I like these constant pressure clamps. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse them, but again, our kit does come with new warm style clamps. And now for our noodle hose. Same thing, this one has a notch cut out in it. I'm gonna go ahead and use that as my centering guide. on baby you can do it you can be anything you want beautiful like a freaking glove I'm just gonna set these clamps on our hoses for when we get back on the car 
set them far back a little bit, just like that. Hopefully I can get to them later. All right, we have our new hoses on, we have our clamps ready to go, our electric fan is mounted. Now we can go back to the vehicle, get it installed, wiggle our bracket back into place, and go from there. Now we're ready to install our new radiator and fan assembly into the vehicle. So first things first is we're gonna use this pin here, this guide, and key it back into our rubber grommet on the body of the car. And then we can work on hooking up our upper and lower radiator hoses. That way this thing is secured and it's not gonna fall out on us. Guide the hoses kind of where they need to be, just like that. Insert our nipple over there. Just kind of, just kind of rest it like that. I'm gonna set my uh, coolant catch can back under here just so in case it does fall while I'm hooking up the hoses, I have something to catch it. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our radiator, starting by lining our alignment pin back into the rubber grommet on the body, followed by hooking up the radiator hoses. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our bracket back into the vehicle so we can support this radiator up and bolt it back in with our 13 millimeter bolts. You wanna make sure your resistor goes back on the bracket itself so that it stays in its original home. Then you wanna line up your two pins on the end of the radiator back into these rubber grommets on the bracket as well. Uh, make sure your wiring is secure. You don't want to pinch them in the wrong spots. Something like that's good for now. And we can grab our 13 millimeter nut and bolts and secure the bracket back onto the car. Plug in and clip the electrical connector. Back into its home. We're just going to put in the last two 13 millimeter bolts on the bottom. Beautiful. Now that our radiator and fan assembly is secured, we can go ahead and secure our small radiator hose that goes at the top corner of our radiator. How many times can we say radiator in this DIY? Can we do a radiator counter? Radiator Springs featuring Lightning McQueen. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Bam, baby. Now we can install our brass washers and pins that secure the radiator to this bracket itself. Start with the bottom one. Followed by the clip itself. And do the same thing for the top. Beautiful. Now what we have left is to secure our AC condenser, put our ducting back on. Let's do that. Let's put our AC condenser back on. We're gonna line up our tab into the mounting point on the CSF radiator. Just like that. Slide it over. And the CSF radiator comes with new hardware already installed on it. We're just gonna line up our bolt holes and mount those back into place. The new hardware that comes with the CSF units is 10 millimeters. So I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter ratchet, 
snug these down. If you want to torque them down, it's going to be no more than seven foot pounds. Now everything's mounted up, we can put our ducting back on. If you have the opportunity, go ahead and blow the fins out on the AC condenser. They do get packed up with crap. You can see this one's a little bit worse for wear, so we might have to change that out in the future. However, for the passenger side, you do still have your air temperature sensor and the grommet that you need to feed back through this hole. So start with that, and then you can line up the bolt holes. Again, this comes with new hardware for this, so make sure you use that or else the hardware ghost will come and get you. Look at that, it wasn't even installed before. Then you can line this up. Make sure all your bolt holes line up. Grab your new hardware and line it up again. How many times can I say that? I'm going to line up these bolt holes and then start threading in our new hardware. Make sure you line it up. Uh, yeah, you want to make sure these are lined up. This, this bottom one does not line up. <laughs> So at this point, this concludes the whole replacement on the passenger side of the vehicle. Again, this can be used if you're simply taking off the bumper to clean out your radiator and AC condenser, or if you're going to do it, go ahead and do a repair like we did today, or an upgrade. Now the other side is going to be completely identical with the exception of this temperature sensor that's in the shroud on the passenger side here. And we're going to go ahead and do that quickly, and then we're going to go ahead and show you how to fill the system and vacuum bleed it so that you have no air bubbles and you can get your car back on the road. Let's do it. All right, my good people, at this point you can see we're at the back of the car. We're ready to bleed the vacuum system after our job that we've done today. So what I've done so far is just set up the equipment, the Airlift 2 tool as we're going to need it. Um, for this specific car, I had to go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter nut that held the tank in place, which you saw earlier. So what I did is I pulled it over so we can get our airline and our suction line in place. And then uh, from here, I went ahead and just gave it a little bit of PSI to make sure that our system didn't have any leaks before we filmed for you guys. Um, so far, the system seems to be holding. You want to pump up your gauge to about 20 to 25. You can see that on the tool instructions. Right now, we're just about 12 pounds of pressure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it up to 20, 25. A um, couple things to note. If the system is not fully empty, you're going to have some coolant come back up the tool. It's got a breather up here. It's going to spew out a little bit. So you always want to do this with the car as empty as possible. We've tried to do our best on that, but we're for sure going to have some residuals. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pressurize the gauge to the level that it needs to be at. And as long as it doesn't drop after about a minute or so of sitting there, then that means our system is completely airtight and we can work on filling the car up. So let's go ahead and get started on that. You can see we're hitting about 20 pounds almost. We want to get to 24, 26 is a correction. However, as you have noticed by the uh, Niagara Falls scene we got going on here, there is still some coolant in the system that we're battling. So again, this machine does not work really well if you still have a ton of coolant in the vehicle. So we're going to try to get to our uh, desired pressure. If we just flat out can't reach it, we'll try to disconnect a couple more hoses and push out the rest of the coolant in the car and set up again. Now that we've reached our full pressure, the system's holding, we're going to go ahead and dip our 
our suction hose into our mix. We have a 50-50 mix of distilled water and genuine Porsche coolant. You can see it's totally the right color versus what came out of the car. So you want to make sure that your uh, suction end is all the way at the bottom of the bucket at all times so you avoid filling in with any air by accident. So I'm going to get this started and then we'll start filling the system. Now to fill the system, we're simply going to release this blue valve and then it should instantly pull up the coolant from the bucket. And there you have it, my good people. Pretty straightforward with this vacuum bleeder from Airlift. Airlift 2, that is. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and remove this tool, put on our cap, and conclude this DIY for you good people. Now, if your reservoir is overfilled, then you can go ahead and use something like a syringe or a baster just to remove any excess. I'm going to make sure that we're at the fill line, and if I need to, I'll top it off with my jug. Now that our system's filled up, we're going to go ahead and head back to the front of the vehicle and put our bumper cover back on and our fender liners now that we know there's no leaks or any of that bad stuff. Now that we have everything situated up front, our cooling system's bled, we've checked for leaks, we're going to go ahead and put our bumper cover back on. So let's go ahead and get that going. You'll notice the hood latch has an emergency release built in. If you choose to, you can go ahead and route this somewhere behind the bumper should you ever need to, route, need to uh, access it in an emergency. You want to make sure you're lining up your air ducts at the front of the bumper. Don't force it on if it's not going on easily. Take your time with it. You want to make sure you get this right so you don't damage anything on the vehicle. So you can see here, here's our emergency release. I'm going to go ahead and just tuck this up here somewhere where I can access it later. We have our three Phillips heads. If you remember from the removal process, the longest one, there's one that's longer out of the three, that's your middle one. So we'll start with that one since we know where it goes. All right, now let's head over to the side of the car and get our hardware in by the side markers. Now we're going to go ahead and put our hardware in that sat behind the side marker light. We had three Phillips screws. Now we can go ahead and put our side marker light back in. Just one clip. And then to put the light back in, you have a notch on the front that hooks into the plastic bumper cover and then a metal clip that springs tension on it to keep it in place. Boom, baby. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our fender liner. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same side on the driver's side. Throw our wheels on and wrap up this DIY. Now we've got everything set up here. We're going to go ahead and reinstall our fender liners. On the passenger side, you may have a gutter that runs out the fender liner. Make sure you put it back in place before fitting your liner through. Next, we're going to install our 10 millimeter plastic nuts just so this stays in place. We got two in the back half. Something useful is to use the uh, wear marks on the liner so you know that you're lining it up the way it was when you pulled it out. Beautiful. I got, we have some fresh rivets. We're going to go ahead and install those next. Beautiful. On the passenger side, there is one behind the strut. Don't forget that one when you're removing it out as well. You're removing it out. That's cool. See? Yeah, please. Next, we're going to go ahead and line up the bottom portion of our fender liner. 
You want to make sure your fender liner is keyed in properly underneath the fender or the bumper before you put in any hardware. I'm going to go ahead and throw our rivet back in just so it holds everything in place. And then we can put in our Phillips head screws. Beautiful. We're going to go ahead and tighten our wheel down with our 19 millimeter lug and then torque it down to 96 foot pounds. Now we have our wheel on. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of the vehicle. We're going to put our fender liner back in, our hardware that holds our bumper back in place and torque our wheel down to 96 foot pounds. And that's going to wrap up this DIY. Now we're going to install our two Phillips screws up here on top of the bumper cover. and then put our surrounding radiator trim piece back on. I'm gonna start by putting the latch through the cover here first, if possible. Followed by your four securing clips or lock rings. Our fender liner seal back on. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. As you can see, overall, not a bad job on this 996. The radiator upgrade is a nice touch to the vehicle, especially if you're going to be doing some spirited driving or you're looking to get rid of these plastic end cap tank radiators, or you simply want to clean out your system. Overall, pretty straightforward job. We hope you like what you saw today. If that's the case, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on the job we did today, leave those in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.